where does malware go on a computer? Where does malware get put? Like, where does it live or sit in the file system? And I know it sounds weird to say that, but if you are a penetration tester or a red teamer or an ethical hacker, genuinely, if you're trying to put an implant or a backdoor malware or beacon on the computer, where do you put it? Where does it go? Here's the thing. I am inside of a Windows 11 virtual machine and I have Windows Defender, the built-in antivirus, disabled and turned off. It's ruined, it's nuked, it is out of the operating system. But I do have an EDR or an endpoint detection and response program set up in stage for me to play with it like Aurora, Aurora Lite, and we've showcased that in another video if you're interested. But if I were to go and open up Process Hacker to go explore and see what programs, software and applications are running on my computer, I can see oexplorer.exe, like your Windows desktop, right? If I take a look at the properties here, I could see that that is running out of its file system location and placement, see Windows System 32. Now that is the normal natural place for natural built-in Windows core components, right? Like if I were to simply make a copy and paste oh, the cmd.exe program to my desktop, I could close out the one that is actively running and we could go open up this one. And of course, Process Hacker will tell us, look, that's actually running now out of your desktop or some other file system location and placement on the computer. Now this is where we could get into some of the anomalies, right? Some of the weird stuff, like explorer.exe should only run out of system 32. CMD.exe or notepad or calculator or whatever, any program should probably not run in any location outside of where it's naturally found. But if we, as an ethical hacker, red team or penetration tester had a completely alien file, malware, our implant and backdoor, where should we put it then? Now, obviously, in the security game of cat and mouse between blue teamers, cyber defenders, and red teamers, ethical hackers, malware developers, and just genuine threat actors and cyber criminals, right? There is a lot of information out there on where does malware go? Where could it be put on the file system for its own execution? And then what should defenders actually be monitoring, looking for, and hunting for things running out of a strange location? This does drive the point home, though. You probably don't want to put, oh, a backdoor malware or implant in some location where it just doesn't make any sense. It's stupid, like you shouldn't put it in your music folder or your pictures directory, right? You could put it in the public users directory, but that's probably going to be monitored. If anything, that EDR solution, Aurora or our antivirus, should catch on to stuff being staged out of those folders. And I thought, hey, we could put this to the test. We could try it out, we could see it in action, put together a little playground with a freely accessible and easily available EDR like Aurora, and I thought it'd be cool to see, will it get detected? Where could we put different legitimate malware samples like Mimi Cats and see what it might do? And by the way, everything that I'm scrolling through here, what I'm showcasing is actually an excerpt from Maldev Academy. Super cool thing, and we'll dive into it more, but before we do, please let me tell you about the sponsor of today's video and an awesome event that they have coming up. SOC Analyst Appreciation Day. Security Operations Center analysts are too often overworked and underappreciated. They're doing the most impactful cybersecurity work, but they're never in the limelight. So to help celebrate those SOC Analyst rock stars, Devo is hosting the fourth annual SOC Analyst Appreciation Day. It's all to pay some long due kudos to our world SOC analysts and to encourage organizations to improve their job satisfaction and mental well-being. The online event is completely free and open to anyone and everyone. Live on October 16th, it is packed full with career-focused sessions, preventing burnout, secrets to success, day-in-the-life details for analysts and researchers, and so much more. I'll even be speaking on the rapid response efforts during the ConnectWise Screen Connect exploitation. I'd love to see you there. If you are a Security Operations Center analyst, or you're fascinated by the work and you want to become one, you should absolutely tune in to the SOC Analyst Appreciation. It's completely free, and it's a day dedicated to celebrate you and your great efforts. Sign up for the SOC Analyst Appreciation Day on October 16th, with my link below in the video description, jh.live slash SOC. Huge thanks to Devo for sponsoring this video. So there are different detection rules, especially written in Sigma, which Aurora is built and based off of, right? And that might actually trigger and find, hey, some suspicious execution from malware running out of uncommon directories or different locations. And those are some of the EXEs we could see in perf logs or that user's public directory, et cetera, et cetera. 
But let's do the demo here. So I'm gonna get back into my Windows 11 virtual machine. I'll fire up the command prompt and I'm actually gonna move into the desktop where I have Aurora already staged and ready here for me. I could just simply run my Aurora agent. I'll use 64-bit and I'll add the TAC-TAC dashboard option so we can explore the alerts and actually get notifications when things fire or trigger. Let me spin it up. We'll go ahead and hit yes, and Aurora will start cruising. Okay, now that Aurora is up and running, I actually want to get back to my desktop and I'll paste in real malware, right? Hey, here's our mimicats.exe. Now you'll already see some alerts coming through from Aurora. That was just a simple indicator of compromise, right? Mimicats.exe, probably not something you should have on your computer. Now, if I double click on this to run it, again, Defender is off, so AV won't fire here, but Aurora and our EDR will kick in. Sees another indicator indicator a compromise match for that file name. Oh, and here's one, Sigma hack tool Mimi Cats execution. Now that's a bit interesting, right? Uh, nothing suspicious running it from my desktop. No alerts that, hey, suspicious program execution location, but it just being Mimi Cats is obviously a little bit sus. Hey, <laughs> indicator of compromise still firing off. Let me see if I can just simply rename this. Can I uh, show more option? And yeah, let's rename this to Kiwi Simulator. Clearly not Mimi Cats, but the greatest game, a triple A title, Kiwi Simulator. Double clicking on this, no alerts. The indicator of compromise, because it has a different file name now and just the query pattern matching of the rule, did not fire, and Mimi Cats isn't gonna go fire as well. But running from my desktop is just fine. Let me try to copy this. I'll cut it and I'll go move to another directory where I could go put this. Here I'm in the users directory and I could go navigate to that public users and let me just paste in our Kiwi Simulator.exe. Double clicking on this, Mimi Cats is now running, but we get, hey, execution from suspicious folder. Nothing specific to the Mimi Cats file name, but at least the location was triggering this. If I actually go open up the Aurora dashboard, hey, localhost 17494, that will bring us to all of the rules and alerts that had fired here. This one's interesting. Suspicious contents in the user's public folder, stuff running where it normally shouldn't. But the rule I'm more interested in is how it detects a suspicious execution from an uncommon folder, the one specifically dedicated to execution from a suspicious location. Where the malware got put is a little bit sketchy and worth our investigation. Now, if I drill down into this rule, we could actually go take a look at how this is put together. It has the rule path and we could go see what is the logic to detect this. That's one of the coolest parts, I think, of, hey, using this Sigma-based EDR. But if I go into the signatures, go into the Sigma rule, public, windows, and we want just a uh, process creation, right? Gonna look for that suspicious execution from a non-standard location. All right, here it is, suspexecutionpath.yml. So we could open this up in a text editor and let's scroll through this. This is the Sigma rule, the detection logic, trying to find whether malware executed from a uncommon and not regular location. This is the same sort of stuff that we got to see in that Maldiv Academy write-up and now we can figure out the logic. It's checking if the image, the executable, the location path contains any of these different locations, like running from the recycle bin, a little bit sketch, different log locations, of course, those different users, and just strange stuff in Windows. Hey, there's my favorite one, C Windows Tasks. Oh man, that's a bummer. I always put stuff in C Windows Tasks. That's where I normally put some sketchy stuff. Putting Kiwi Simulator in there, of course, will fire. Oh, and by the way, Maldiv Academy actually touches on this. In their conclusion section, they mention simply dropping a binary into any writable directory, like the public folder or C Windows Tasks, is usually done in CTFs. Okay, I'm, I'm guilty there. And other unrealistic environments, which unfortunately teach folks bad OPSEC techniques. For stealth evasion, you know, doing the right stuff with professional red team ethical hacking pen testing malware. So I would get caught dropping into C Windows tasks, but we could dig into more of the logic, at least in this example for the Sigma rule, where could we hide under the radar? The Maldiv Academy module even showcases this little chart with some of the statistics and percentage of how often malware gets dropped into some different locations. App data and the temporary directory are the most common stuff, right? And it's interesting to me because they discuss that in the commonly abused directories, but digging into the Sigma logic, I don't see that noted for, hey, every user's local app data or app data roaming or their own temporary location. Like if I were to go ahead and go put our cheesy Kiwi simulator, I'll copy that location and then go to my own temporary directory. Note that that's in my user location. 
C users John H app data local temp. Go ahead and paste our QE simulator right into app data roaming, and it's getting the indicator of compromise on this one now, but um, it doesn't whine about execution from that folder. Now, at the very least, we can make changes to this rule, like we can manipulate this Yara and Sigma detection if we wanted to just add in another spot to look for, like our users, but using a wild card perhaps to get into app data roaming or app data temp. Let me go use the path from temp. That's app data slash local slash temp here. I can have that as a location, but I don't see this working. And I don't know, this could be me. I, I could be naive and ignorant, but I'm curious for some of the smarter Sigma folks. Uh, is this wildcard going to work as it should inside of an image filtered on contains? I genuinely don't know, and I'm willing to look like an idiot here, because if I were to stop and start Aurora, let me get back to the command line and I'll close out Aurora running, and then I'll just start it one more time. Here, restart, so it will reload all those rules. We could have just entered like reload in the command line, but hey, I'm trusting this thing anyway. Now that Aurora is back in action, up and running, would I be able to go try to fire out of the temporary directory my QE simulator.exe. Let me close out some of these uh, other windows and notifications so it's not uh, more annoying and <laughs> a little bit overwhelming as it already is. So I think we're clear. So the question is, will this rule trying to look for the temp environment variable locations or anything specific to the current user, will that track the execution from a suspicious or uncommon location with my Mimi Cat's QE simulator.exe? It still doesn't fire. And that, I, again, maybe I'm getting that syntax wrong or I don't know Sigma well enough. I'm I'm okay to be the idiot here, but I did think that was peculiar in those two commonly abused locations were not included in the Sigma rule. Now, of course, all those other locations are good things to track, good things to know of, and should definitely be something that your EDR or your antivirus would flag on. But I was a little bit surprised and just caught off guard when, hey, the rule set that came with Aurora Light and the EDR did not have a lot of the detection for suspicious execution out of like the app data variable or the temporary directory for a specific user. That was just peculiar to me. If anything, good education and things to know as to where malware might get put and where malware goes on a computer file system.